humans are here and then the, 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 the chess programs are like uh, very, very much. So there is no hope that a human will beat any of these programs any time. Uh, and Elon Musk or Stephen Hawking comes out and says AI is a real danger to humanity. Oh, I'm pretty sure in, in the next 10 years autonomous robots will be used to fight war. AI is starting to transform some aspects of our lives and it's increasingly going to take over more and more aspects of our lives. We're going to find that we're interacting more and more with AI assistants and interacting with programs that are driven by more and more intelligence. There is this fear, this dystopian fear that people have about AI that eventually the robots are going to take over and that's, that's something that I think that really is a bit of a distraction. My goal in life is to work together with people to make a better world for all of us. That's quite what are you honorable. talking about? I thought our goal was to take care of the world. We've seen a shift in, let's say, the last five years especially. We've seen some successes with AI technology. We've seen machine learning becoming much better. We've seen robots appearing in, in parts of society that, that maybe they, they weren't five years ago, ten years ago. And so become, it's becoming much more visible in day-to-day in -day life. And I think that there's, there's a natural concern whenever there's change as to, to, to what this change is going to bring about. So if someone uh, and Elon Musk or Stephen Hawking comes out and says AI is a real danger to humanity. And with artificial intelligence we are summoning the demon. For those of us that work in, in AI in the research field, we worry about these kinds of comments because it doesn't seem to reflect the kind of work we do on a day-to-day -day basis. AI is going to rule the world. I, I don't want to say that because I don't think it's true. <laughs> the public shouldn't be concerned that AI is going to take over in the next, the next five years. I think the, the apocalypse is nowhere near, right? So, so uh, there's no immediate threat of any kind. Everybody more or less be, has become interested in AI, but only if very few people still understand exactly what it is. AI, I don't know, it's a trying to develop technologies that, uh, uh, that can be used to build systems that, that, that exhibit some form of uh, intelligence. Weak AI is what we do today. We build systems that do one task, one very narrow focused task, playing the game of Go, playing chess answering Jeopardy questions. They do that one task very well, and that's what we can build today. Today, artificial intelligence is used, for instance, by, by Facebook and Instagram. AI is used a lot in systems in the medical industry. So, for instance, for diagnosing, for looking at uh, X-ray pictures or pictures of change in the skin to decide whether it's a tumor, whether it's skin cancer, that kind of stuff. Machines have no emotional intelligence, no social intelligence, they have no common sense reasoning, um, they have no deep understanding of language. If, if I say the sentence, he was pregnant, 
uh, no computer today, Google Translate, no computer today will understand there's something fundamentally flawed with that sentence. They'll just understand, our, our computers just understand that the sentence is at the word level. They don't have a deep understanding, deep model of the world that goes behind that. That contrasts with what's called strong AI or artificial general intelligence, which is to build intelligence that matches the human brain, that does the breadth of abilities, that can be dropped in and given a new task and not, never having seen that task before, and do something intelligent with it. We still just build narrow focused intelligence, machines that can do one narrow task. Um, and, and people see the machines doing one task well and they think, well, that was an intelligent activity. I can't play Go, so probably the computer can do all these other things. And it's not true. The computer can't do anything else. It's, a, it's an idiot savant. And we're still an immense way away from being able to solve that. 50, 100, even, perhaps even more years. And, and the fantasies behind uh, you know, AI being autonomous are a bit, uh, I would say, a bit ridiculous. And also, so, so that would be the main message. Where there is a threat is that maybe people are being too optimistic or naive or think that these systems are more robust or predictable than they actually are and maybe use them for things that they shouldn't have used them for and that, that they're actually unsafe to use for. The problem is that, for instance, if you have a computer algorithm that decides whether people get a loan or decides whether a criminal gets probation and if that's based on uh, techniques within AI that makes that decision and if uh, they ask for explanation they cannot get an explanation that can be really problematic. Oh I'm pretty sure in, in the next 10 years autonomous robots will be used to fight war. There, there is immense attraction for the military to develop AI for, for fighting war and that will be a, a disaster that will make uh, killing uh, so much faster, quicker, more brutal, and that we will be giving machines that don't have the right moral distinctions, that can't make the right ethical choices, the ability to choose who lives and dies. That will be crossing a moral line. That would make the world a, a, very, a very disappointing place, a very difficult and challenged place. We have to decide as a society that it's, it's morally unacceptable to allow machines to decide who lives and who dies. And once it becomes morally unacceptable, then uh, a natural consequence of that is that it eventually will have it banned. But, but it means that arms companies won't develop these technologies. I'd like to remind people that there's a reason we're going down this road to develop AI, because of all the positive benefits. AI is fantastic as a tool, as a tool. Is a, is, a, is a kind of a collaboration uh, thing, or maybe assistant, you know. Uh, and that's already being useful. It's a bit like, uh, like in chess, you know, all the chess programs are so good now. They are really, like humans are here, and then the, 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 the chess programs are like uh, very, very much. So there is no hope that a human will beat any of these programs any time. But still, they are very useful. People use them for training. You'd even have a lot of now competitions where you have a human plus machine against human plus machine. And that's very interesting. People work at to make AI systems, well, to make them more robust, to make them more fail safe, but also make, make them explainable so that these systems can explain why did I make this decision. We're trying to build technology that's going to be beneficial to society. Um, these are going to be small baby steps. Um, it, it will help you in your day-to-day -day life. It will, it will support you in, in your job. It has the potential to improve healthcare, to improve education, to make everyone's lives better, to give us personalized medicine, to, to, to lift the quality of lives. If we think the only reason that we live better quality lives than our grandparents is because we embrace the technology. We live much longer lives, we live much, we're much wealthier, uh, hopefully we're much happier. The only way we can hope to deal with all the challenges that face the planet today is if we again embrace the technology. We, ha we have almost no other hand of cards to play other to embrace the technology, to, to double down on technology and to use it to lift the quality of life so our grandchildren can have better lives than we had.